In this video, we will talk about the SPI protocol. Don't forget to forward our videos to your friends if you think they're helpful. SPI stands for Serial Peripheral Interface. It features full duplex communication and comes with a faster data transmission speed than I squared C and UART. Normally, SPI can achieve 1 megabit per second, at least on Arduino, while I squared C can only reach 400 kilobits per second at most. The SPI protocol is simple and easy to use, and there are abundant ready-to-go libraries for using SPI on Arduino. In addition, multiple SPI devices can be supported through chip selection, which requires relatively fewer hardware resources and low costs. The SPI interface was developed by Motorola in the mid-1980s. Multiple devices can coexist by chip selection, but that also means more complex connections. Besides, SPI has a high demand for wire routing because of its high transmission speed. SPI is a full-duplex synchronous serial communication protocol. Here, we're going to learn more about these keywords. Full duplex means SPI can transmit and receive data simultaneously, just like you are. So it needs at least two communication lines. The word synchronous shows it has a clock line to synchronize the communications on both sides, just like I squared C. And serial indicates the data transmission is implemented via serial communication, which is the same as I squared C and U R. SPI usually uses controller peripheral architecture with a single controller and multiple peripherals. Typically, all SPI devices require at least four wires, PICO, peripheral in, controller out, POCI, peripheral out, controller in, SCLK, serial clock, and CS, chip select. So how does communication in SPI work? First, the controller needs to choose which peripheral it wants to talk to. Chip select pins are connected to different peripherals correspondingly. Then, a peripheral can be selected by changing its CS signal from high to low, and other unselected peripherals will ignore the incoming SCLK and PICO signals and also not send signals via POCI. After the peripheral is determined, the data transmission starts. As mentioned before, SPI uses a clock line to synchronize the transferred data bits. When the transmission mode is selected, signals can be transferred via PICO and POCI at the same time on the rising or falling clock edge, just like two trains running toward each other. Here, we take 8 bits as a communication period. This data exchange will be done after one period. Then, chip selection and data transmission will start again. After completing the data transfer, the controller stops transmitting the SCLK signal, and the CS signal returns from low to high. So next, let's see how to use SPI. Here, we use a 6-axis IMU module from DF Robot to detect the acceleration along the X, Y, and Z axes. Then, save the data on a microSD card and display the acceleration on an LCD screen. We'll choose the DF Robot Fire Beetle ESP32E as the main controller in this project. Since a high data refresh rate is required here, all devices will be connected by SPI interfaces to ensure everything goes well. Now, connect them to the Fire Beetle ESP32E according to the SPI connection rule. Upload the recording program. Then the data of the three axes will be saved onto the micro SD card and displayed on LCD in real time. Well, the recorder is done. Let's record motions with it.
Afterward, we can use this motion data for some training in TinyML to generate a neural network model. And let's see if it will be as popular as our friend Kutluhan Akhtar's project. Well, thanks for watching. That's all about SPI for today. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, and comment for us. You can also find more information about I squared C and UART in our previous videos. Click the bell icon to receive our notifications, and don't forget to forward our videos to your friends if you think they're helpful. We'll see you next time.